Years back, I went to visit an old college professor of mine. He had taught me a class on Christian ethics. I had also taken another course with him on Introduction to Comparative Religion. I was on my way to give a talk. He asked me what the talk was about. I told him it was on the theme that, from the Buddhist point of view, the pursuit of happiness doesn't have to be hedonistic. He said, I wish I could hear that talk. Because it is a common theme in the West. If you're out looking for pleasure, it's just for your own sake. And we know how empty pleasures can be. But from the Buddhist point of view, the pursuit of pleasure, happiness, bliss, all of which is covered by the word sukha, is something to be respected. If you don't respect it, it goes underground, it gets distorted. So in our practice, we bring it up into the open and take it seriously. If you really want to be happy, what are the requisites of happiness? And one is that your happiness not harm anyone else. This is something that's missing from a lot of discussions of happiness. There was a book I read a while back on positive psychology, the kind of psychology that covers the issue of happiness, as opposed to the psychology that covers pathology. And the author was classing different kinds of happiness, but in trying to be scientific about it, he said we couldn't get, let issues of morality get in the way. In other words, say the skills of robbing a bank can be just as happy as the skills of going out and helping people. And that's where the author had it all wrong. If you're looking for happiness, you have to think about the consequences. When you look for happiness, what impact do your actions have on other people? What impact do they have on your own mind? And the happiness itself, what kind of impact does it have on other people and on your own mind? Otherwise, if the impact is bad, the happiness is going to start falling apart. It won't be solid. And one of the Buddha's discoveries is that by being good, in other words, by acting in ways that give rise to good results, not just avoiding harm, but positively good results. is also a way to find happiness. The big three categories are generosity, virtue, and meditation. Because when you engage in these, you're not harming anybody. And you're bringing positive good to yourself and other people. The actions themselves are good. The happiness that results has a good impact on the mind. Think of the happiness of generosity. You develop a more enlarged mind. You're not thinking only of yourself all the time. It's like living in a large house. You have lots of room, lots of room to spread out. If you're stingy, if you're not concerned about helping others, it's like living in a very narrow house, very confining. The same with virtue. You think about the impact of your actions on other people. You try to avoid any harm. You avoid trying to get them to do harm. You don't condone their doing harm. It's for their good, and it's for your good. The sense of self-esteem that comes when you know that you've acted in ways that don't harm other people. can give a sense of lightness to the mind. And of course, with meditation, sitting here with your eyes closed, you're not harming anybody. 
but more importantly, the fact that you're trying to get your mind under control. That's going to be good for you and for the people around you. You're going to be less prey to your greed, aversion, and delusion. Because an important part of the meditation is when you make up your mind to stay with the breath, you're going to have to fight off your distractions. What used to be normal thinking suddenly becomes something you've got to fight. It makes you more sensitive to ways in which your mind creates lots of problems for itself. This is a lesson you learn from virtue as well. When you take the precepts, suddenly you realize that certain things that were okay are suddenly not okay. And that makes you more sensitive to the harm that you've been doing. Maybe little tiny things, but things that can begin to eat away at the mind, eat away at other people's minds. So both with virtue and meditation, you're developing greater sensitivity in your actions. Virtue is for more sensitivity in what you say and do and what your intentions are and what you say and do. Meditation goes deeper still. We're looking at what the Buddha calls five aggregates, the form of your body as you feel it from within, your feelings, your perceptions, your fabrications, where you put thoughts together, and your consciousness. All of these things are activities. Even the way you keep reaffirming to yourself, where is your body right now? That's an activity, your sense of form, i.e. how you feel the body from within. The feelings you focus on, the perceptions you focus on. As you meditate, you get more sensitive to ways in which these things, these choices, are having a good or a bad impact on the mind. You get more sensitive to the kinds of things you might do based on the thoughts that you dwell on. You realize that it really does make a difference what you dwell on. And when you gain a sense that you have more control over the mind, that gives you a sense of lightness, a sense of happiness, a sense of ease. There's the visceral ease of learning how to breathe in a way that's comfortable, and the mental ease that comes when you realize that unskillful things can come in the mind and you can fend them off. As you develop your repertoire of skills, you see more and more that This little thing in the mind that used to take over very easily now doesn't take you take over so easily. And you're able to say no to it without any sense of regret. That's a source of real self esteem. The kind of happiness that goes deeper than just pleasures. So you realize there's goodness and happiness here that go together. There's something really refreshing about that. The Buddhist term for that is merit. It's one of those terms that we in the West don't pick up very easily. It sounds like brownie points and Cub Scout badges. You might translate it as simple goodness, the goodness of the heart. A heart that finds happiness in doing good. And the heart that develops goodness in searching for happiness. It's the kind of happiness you want to spread around. Because from the very beginning it comes from realizing that your happiness has to be harmless. It has to be good for other people if it's going to last. And so when you gain that happiness, it's a very natural thought to want to dedicate it to others. Think of all the people in the world for whom you have karmic debts. In other words, you've relied on their goodness to get where you are today. 
the things they've done for you, the things they've done to go out of their way to help you. When you found happiness, it's good to want to think of them. Remember the Buddha on the night of his, after his awakening. He started thinking about going to teach. Who was he going to teach first? He was going to teach his old teachers, the ones who had taught him about conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment, as they understood it. He wanted to share what he found with them. Well, it was too late. They had gone, re been reborn in states of the cosmos where they were out of touch with everybody. Then he thought of the five brethren who had looked after him, even though they had shown disdain for him, for abandoning his austerities and going for the middle way. Still, he wanted to help them. After that, he went home and he re taught his family, he repaid them. Now, there was the kind of happiness that comes from doing good. It's something that you naturally want to share. Now, it may be that the case that the people you want to share it with are not interested, but it's a part of that goodness, it's a part of that happiness that you share it anyhow, you offer it anyhow. So every now and then, as you meditate, it's good to stop and think, who are the people in the world who have benefited you in different ways? People you know personally, people whose, whose books you've read, people who have done art, music that's inspired you, anything that's been a good part of your life. You think here we are, living in this human civilization with, with all of its problems, but a large part of the civilization, the things that have been passed down are passed down because they're good. So dedicate some merit to everybody that you can think of. That helps get, make this expansive sense of happiness, this expansive sense of well-being, even more expansive. And on days when your meditation is not going well, it's good to remind yourself that you've had thoughts like this, have developed this attitude. That in and of itself can lift the mind. So as you remember, whatever the ups and downs in the meditations, the goodness and the happiness when they're found are really good. All around.